Hello, welcome back to the Fusion Podcast. This is episode six of season one. This will be the last episode of the first season, um, but keep your eyes peeled um, for episodes going forward. But we have an amazing episode today, more than an amazing episode. We have an amazing co-host, Vicky, no longer Taylor, Vicky Seethel. Is what I know. Oh. How about that? Oh. Or how is it pronounced? That was bad. It was Seithel. It rhymes with trifle. That's how you need to remember it. Look at this. Double Seithel, as in trifle, is with us today, showing off the bling. Mm -hmm. um vicky who have we got on today what are we talking about oh such a good episode today so we have Immy and susanna who are freshers now if you are a fusion fan you may remember them from results day when sam went on instagram live with them and heard all about how they were feeling about starting uni in 2020 and now we recap with them, see how they're doing. And um, yeah, just ask, how has their freshers actually been? And what does it look like in COVID? And has it been good? And have they found a church? We will never know. Well, we will, if you listen to the podcast. We, we, we will. Um, we and we have done, because we recorded these after we've recorded the podcast. Um, oh, I think so... that was a production secret. I didn't know if we were telling people. Well, no, because we can give a bit of a preview then, can't we? Mm, that's true. Well, um, let me tell you, it's good. And so should... lots of good stuff to, to watch out for today. Lots of chat about all that stuff, including the film Legally Blonde uh, comes up at some point, which apparently is the sole reason why Vicky went to uni. That's true. That is a truth right there. Yeah. Um, if anyone else uh, went to university or made any other major life decisions based on the fact uh, that they saw a particular film, please do let us know um, in the comments or on a postcard. Always wanted to say that. Now I have. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, also, this is my uh, favourite part of the podcast because I get to hand over to myself. Although normally I hand over to myself. Do you want to do it this time? Yeah, sure. Now we are going to hand over to Sam, who's going to take us through the podcast. Great, we are joined then by Susanna and uh, Imogen or Immy. I can go with Immy, can't I? Yeah, Immy. That's all right. Yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> um, so we'll start with you then, Immy. Do you want to uh, introduce uh, us to you? Um, where are you studying? Uh, what are you doing? Where, where, and where are you from originally, of course? How can I forget? <laughs> um, hi, I'm Immy. I'm from Essex originally. Um, sadly, I am losing my accent because I'm... University of Exeter and I'm studying drama um yeah so done one half term of drama which has been good brilliant and then we've got Susanna as well yeah so I am Susanna I'm from Preston um, studying in Bristol doing law so I'm one of those northerners who ventured down south <laughs> I know how you feel uh Susanna <laughs> we've got Two Northerners and two Essex girls on the show today. Um, yeah, yeah. With Vicky as well, absolutely, come on. Um, so, two uh, students who've just started in September. Um, it's been a very different university experience to what um, me and Vicky and you, the listener, might have um, experienced before. So we want to find out from these guys uh, what it's been like um, to live uh, in a university halls of residence, to start your course, to start making friends, um, stop finding a church uh, all whilst under the auspice, if I can use such a word, um, of COVID. The Vicky's looking unsure. Um, of COVID 19. Um, we'll start with you then, Amy. Um, I, I'm guessing like everyone's been asking you, kind of, how's it been uh, thus far? You've just been home for reading week and now you're back. Mm -hmm. um, how are you kind of characterizing the first few weeks of university? Um, I have to say, I think I have found it really really I've loved it I really really have loved it I think I think it's it got to the point where we kind of were just like we have to embrace the situation that we're in because this is how we're going to university this year we can't yeah. change anything about it I've been really blessed in the fact that Exeter term or Devon is um has been in tier one and is a low sort of um Covid zone if that makes sense so actually I had most of the freedoms that I would have had normally except obviously the social distancing and the masks and they're all of six um so actually it's been really really good I've loved it um the first couple of weeks were hard I think just adjusting to university life is always gonna be hard freshers was weird this year it definitely wasn't what I was expecting it to be but it was really really good and actually I think 
there's been pros and cons, but I think one of the great things for me at least was that I got to meet people a lot more sort of in smaller groups and it meant I got to know people a lot quicker. Mm. I think usually you just come across hundreds and hundreds of people in loads and loads of big groups and you don't really get to know anyone closely until later on. So that's that was a really nice sort of part of the first few weeks. Um, I've, I've been loving my course. Um, I'm doing drama, which is obviously very practical based, but actually the course I'm taking is 50-50 theory and practical. So we're doing all of our the- theory this term, sorry. Um, and actually I've loved that I didn't expect to like it as much as I have but I've loved it um the work's been full-on there's been lots of stuff I've done my first essay um and I've got two assessments this week (laughs) hope they go well too um but yeah no I've really kind of I've tried my best to throw myself in I've joined lots of societies I found my church which is great we'll talk about that later I think um, and yeah, so I've had a really great time. I had a bit of a blip in the middle. Um, one of my flatmates got COVID. Um, so that was a really sort of, that was a bit of a test of faith and kind of like strength. Um, we had about a week and a bit of isolation. Um, oh, wow. But yeah, but um, fortunately I was actually at home when I found out. So I was able to stay at home and I think, so I had it better off than lots of my flatmates did. Um, but anyway, it, it is what it is. And yeah, I think I've tried to make the most out of it. So I have, I've loved it and it's been brilliant. Good. Fantastic. It is what it is. You're making the most of it. That's so good to hear. Is, is your uh, a similar story, Susanna? Yeah, definitely. I think I would mirror a, a lot of what Emmy said. I think in a sense of everyone's in the same boat and every day just feels a bit chaotic, which is nice, I think. I think just me being a person that likes to know what's happening all the time, yeah. I think it's been really good for me just to kind of get out of my comfort zone in that way and to be able to share that experience with flatmates and other students and people from the CU and things I feel like we all kind of bonded in the fact that no one knows what's going on um so yeah I think all the things that I was really overwhelmed about before I think if I knew what I do now before I left I probably would have just trusted God more just because Mm -hmm. when you actually get here um things just don't seem as bad as what you made them out to be in your mind oh brilliant that is good to hear um Fantastic. I'm glad that you're both doing very, very well, um, or certainly sound to be. Um, um, you mentioned freshers, Imi. I want to talk a little bit more about that, because when we say the word freshers, that conjures up a very um, distinctive image in the minds of people who have been to university, who even are aware of what um, a kind of, I suppose, normal and inverted freshers week might look like. What was freshers like for you, though, Imi? Um I have to say, I'm not really a part animal. So to me, freshers, the idea of going out every night drinking until like 5am was never what I liked to do anyway. So in that sense, I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything. In fact, it was actually quite a nice thing. I didn't have to worry about everyone wanting to do that all the time. Um, It was hard. I just think because you're coming from a place of wanting to meet as many people as you can in the first week, wanting to find, there's a lot of pressure to find your people. That phrase was thrown, thrown around constantly was, have you found your people? Do you know who your people are yet? You know, how do you find your people? It was constantly this mm. idea of finding the people that you should find. And the yeah. pressure to do that in freshers was quite a lot this year. I think because there wasn't such an emphasis on everyone just spending loads and loads of time together in massive groups and everyone going out. Um, obviously, we were able to go to the pubs and stuff, which was fun. Um, but I think, yeah, I think for me, freshers, the image I had in my mind, because we've sort of known for a while that, covid was a thing hadn't i sort of adjusted that already before i came here that it wasn't going to be the typical freshers sure. um, and i was i was fine with that um lots wouldn't have been loads of my friends weren't really sort of that i've made here that aren't christian or that kind of you know whatever they you know they didn't like it as much as they usually would have done um mm. but i think it was i think it was okay i think the uni did the best that they could um in terms of events and the societies run lots and lots of zooms um so that was okay. And yeah, I did get to meet lots and lots of people. Um, the way that my accommodation works is that we've got lots and lots of blocks in one area. So we were kind of able to mix in a bit in terms of being groups of six outside of our accommodation. You could sort of meet different people and stuff. So it, it, it kind of worked. It was okay. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't awful. It was kind of just, it was what it was. I feel like everyone tried to make the best out of it as well, which is always a good thing. That's good to hear. It's- really interesting what you said about finding your people like I've heard that phrase thrown around so much like not just in freshers but in wider areas of life and I'm reading this book at the moment that is brilliant um it's called you are the girl for the job but honestly my only challenge with it is I wish it wasn't called you are the only girl because guys it's so good for guys too but in it she talks about who your people are and what it means 
to find your people um and she says a lot around like it's often your friends and your close-knit community um and the people that you feel you can be most vulnerable with but she completely flips it on it on its head where she was like they aren't your people that's your small group that's your local church your people are the people that you serve and they aren't necessarily always your friends so I've been chatting to a lot of students who are in flats with people that they aren't wouldn't necessarily call their people but they don't have a lot of options to go and find their people outside of their flats with Covid um, and I felt really challenged reading that being like oh my gosh what if our people were the people that we were serving and that we were sharing our faith with even if we aren't naturally like best friends on day one and I thought that was really interesting. So I found it really cool that that's something that's been thrown around a lot with you as well. Yeah, I mean, co- that constantly. And I think I sort of started to put pressure on myself just because I think if you'd asked me what I was most nervous about before coming here, it would have been making friends. I think most people would say that. Um, and I'm a chatty, outgoing, pretty confident person. So for me, it was, it, well, you know, I just, I feel like this year, the one thing to note is that it's been so hard for anybody who struggles to sort of, who, who's introverted or who's quite quiet or shy, this year has been made 10 times harder for them in terms of mating, making friends and meeting people just because there's nobody, the, the, the sort of societies and stuff, they can't organise events that mean you can kind of meet people. And if they're all on Zoom, it's so hard. So mm-hmm. that's sort of one thing to note is like, the idea of finding your people has been something I think it's been pressurising everyone in this environment and has been getting quite hard. But I, I think that's a great way to look at it. Um, and I think it would have been helpful for sort of me to know that coming in. If that's kind of the way I looked at it, I wouldn't have put so much pressure on myself to find my people so quickly, if that makes sense. Got a similar story for you, Susanna, of trying to find um, that group or maybe kind of arriving with that kind of uh, nervousness about finding um, friends. Absolutely. I think I really love what what you said, Vicky, about our people being the ones we serve. And I think I've definitely had a few opportunities where um, looking at someone who isn't typical to me, it's not my kind of person, totally different backgrounds and upbringings and all that. But in that moment, um, just being vulnerable with them mm-hmm. and, and just being being yourself. I think sometimes as Christians, we come in just thinking, how can I you know, how can I make sure everyone I come into contact with knows Jesus, but actually that's (laughs) going to flow, that's going to flow out of you anyway. If you love Jesus, that's so going to show. And I think I've had a few times where, um, someone in on a a few floors below me just rang me and said, can I come to your room? And, um, just prayed with her and just feeling so overwhelmed. And I think just in those moments, just grabbing that opportunity and just listening and being actually, we don't have to be the best of friends, but right now I can recognize that God's doing something through me to you and just grabbing those opportunities. I think it doesn't, we over-spiritualize it so much and it's just, it can just be so simple. A brilliant bang back of the net. There you go. Um, fantastic. Um, so what are the opportunities then? So I guess for, for those of us who went through Freshers Week, went through first year um, with being able to go out and, and uh, visit lots of different clubs, societies and uh, really mix with different groups of people. Um, have you found that? We'll start with you again, Susanna. Um, where, where have the opportunities come to kind of expand your circle from beyond your flat? Yeah, I think um, for me, CU has been a massive thing um, in the sense of just meeting other Christians um but also people from older years as well I think has been really good um CU has been great for that and just asking asking third years like how do I get this bus or what's going on here and it's just been so good to have that community straight away is that Um, that you've been doing that or yes pretty much on zoom I think before lockdown we had a few like group of six meetups um and things but yeah mainly online um and so yeah I think in terms of law um and my course you kind of have to seek it out and there there is loads available but you just have to kind of put yourself forward um I think right now I'm just finding law students very scary (laughs) they're just very intimidating (laughs) um but no I think I'm just trying to get over that and just put myself forward and, and go for things yeah is it like Legally Blonde, Susanna? Oh my gosh! Can we talk about Legally Blonde? That's <laughs> have, you, have, you all, have we all seen Legally Blonde? That's have we? I, that is my that's my confession that I haven't. So how I've can totally... you be studying law and you haven't seen Legally I know, Blonde? I know. Is she part of the degree? <laughs> Probably is. Um. Honestly, you, I genuinely think you'll be able to tackle 
any intimidating student and you can be like channel your inner L words and be like, well, like it's hard <laughs> and you'll just, you'll just get it. It's going to be great. Um, that's your uh, that's your takeaway thing to do today, Susanna. Is, uh, you need to watch Legally Blonde. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, by by hook or by crook. <laughs> um, brilliant, Amy. You said you joined a few societies. Um, what have you joined? I've done lots of drama societies. Um, Come on. <laughs> what happened was so um, I'm really fortunate. The drama department has tried so hard um, to make sure that we meet as many people as we can, and I'm really really fortunate that. Um, because I'm doing drama, I've got two seminars a week that are in person. So I do kind of have two groups there of people that I've managed to chat to a bit and get to know, which has been really nice. And I've made a few sort of friends from drama through that. Um, but I, I sort of wanted to join lots of the drama societies, but most of them do shows. And so if you don't get into the show, you're kind of not really part of the society. So I kind of joined the main drama society, which kind of just socials and stuff, which have been on Zoom. So that's been okay. But again, it's on Zoom. So there's only so much that you can kind of gain from it. But um, I did audition for a show that I got into, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, incidentally, the comedy society, I don't really think of myself as being very funny, but like you just asked me the script. I guess it went okay because I got in. Um, <laughs> so I've done that. And which has been really, really lovely to just kind of have that community spirit a bit. I've been getting to know a few of them quite well, which is really nice. Um, and yeah, I think the CU for me as well has been a real kind of like saving grace. Um, oh. Not even in, in so much of like the sort of the events that they run have obviously been on Zoom, um, but kind of just like we had a big group chat and so we kind of would text on there and someone might be like, is anyone free for a walk this afternoon or is anyone gonna get a coffee? And you could say yes. And then you'd end up actually mixing with loads of different people because over time, over the few weeks that people were texting, you'd get to meet lots of different people. Um, and I've kind of met lots of Christians through that. Um, and yeah, yeah. I've was well, I came really grounded in the church quite early on and that's sort of given me a great community. So I feel like the societies have kind of been really helpful in leading me to places more than anything. Mm. I kind of found my friends and found kind of like homeliness, if that makes sense, through the leads that societies gave me, which is really, really good. Brilliant. So that's that's interesting as well, because I, I remember um, from when I started university, I loved to see you. Mm. And when I joined, all the kind of like first events for like the start of the first term had a minimum of 50 people at um, mm. because it would be a big main meeting or it would be a big other event and whatever it was, you'd be sat there and you'd be a little bit daunted by all the people who were around. But actually that idea of just being like, oh, who's up for a walk? Who's up for a coffee? Yeah. The fact that you're limited to six people would, I think, massively change the way that you got to know um, yeah. other people, other Christians, instead of like, being in a huge room where you're trying to like ah, I need to get like a good amount of coverage going around actually I can just invest in the people who are here with me is that what you found yeah a hundred percent I think as well like I think lots of the societies have done pa parents so essentially you oh, get yeah. second or third year parents um so in the CU for example I got two girls um Ali and Holly they're not gonna listen to this but shout hey, out Ali and Holly uh, <laughs> I was a Hollywood absolutely love this. She was she'd be right on it. She's doing drama and she's also doing a show with me um that I'm on the sort of backstage production team for. So that's really, really great. And it's just so nice to kind of have that link to the upper years. I think um they've been a great way to kind of connect with them. And the smaller groups kind of work really, really well, I think. They do. Yeah. I think especially within the CU, because they think for me, I really, really wanted to find good Christian friends as soon as I could. And I think that was a great way to kind of get to know a few people. Um, you know, one of my best friends that I've made here lives in the block next to me. And she, I kind of met her through like the CU group chat. So it's all worked out really, really well, actually. And I, th I think I kind of say that's one of the things that I've taken away from societies. More than actually being part of them, which is fun, is they're just the chance you get to meet people in smaller groups this year has actually been, been really good. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I think just that you can't overestimate the impact of having those older years um, who are there in a position to be able to kind of, uh, I suppose, keep an eye on you um, for the first couple of weeks. I um, know the benefit of that. And you find that through those societies, you find it through the Christian Union, you find it through your church. That was where um, my older, wiser owl, best, wherever you may be, um, uh, she was amazing at that. Um, we, we met at church she was in third year she made sure I was at church on a Sunday um, for which I'm grateful um, and that's yeah that's one of the reasons why I ended up um, going back every single um, weekend so <clears throat> I talked a little bit about how you've been finding community how you've been finding university and now I want to talk about how you've been finding church um, what that's been like the process of um, 
uh, you know, going around and, and maybe trying some different ones and then finding one to be like, this is mine. Um, Susanna, did you um, do that? Did you do a bit of kind of church searching or were you like, bang, that's my church, we won? Uh, I d yeah, I definitely hopped around a bit. Um, I think having the, the student link up app before was so, so helpful just to um, look around nice. and then, yeah, shameless plug. <laughs> right, 100%. That wasn't us. That was, that was... <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think also um, being able to watch online services was so helpful. Um, but I would also say that um, you don't get everything you need to know about a church from one service. And so yeah. I would I would encourage people just to keep going and stick at it and don't make rash judgments. Because I think coming from a pastor's family and being on the other side of that and actually attending a service instead of running it um, was actually really interesting. And I think something I, I kind of needed, I think, just to take that pressure off me and just sit in a service and think, I don't need to do anything. I can just receive, um, which, yeah, I think I really, really enjoyed. And so I found my church. Um, I think so one of the student leaders messaged me through Student Link Up. And then I went on to their Instagram and like just connected there um, as well on the student page. And um, then um, he took me out for coffee and just chatted. And I think one thing that really struck me was that and just that kindness and just how people just care about who I am, not necessarily what I can do, what I can contribute, what my skills are, but they just care about me first, um, mm -hmm. which was so, yeah, really, really struck me. Um, and then, yeah, so I've been going there ever since. I think there is, um, it definitely took prayer for me and I really had to seek and be like, okay, God, I know oh. that the right, the, the church that I pick, um, you kind of make it the right one for you, I think. And mm -hmm. I think the option of just just sticking to one and just going where you feel um god's leading you i think it, it's so important so i'd say really stick with it pray about it um but also don't stress too much because i think church has just been such an oasis to me and, and god is everywhere and every church has his presence but i think not going to church can't be an option as a uni student just because it's just you need that you need that fellowship and you also have so much to give to that community I think don't underestimate just because you're a student doesn't mean you can't give wisdom and insight and joy and all that stuff so yeah so good I remember I moved to Sheffield three years ago and um I, I'd, I had graduated, but when I went to uni, I had been a Christian two months. I didn't have any thought process towards like how to actually find a church and what to choose. So I walked in and was like, yep, this is the church. And actually it was amazing, a brilliant church. But when I moved to Sheffield, having been a Christian three years at that point, it was really difficult to know what to say yes to. And my mentor at the time gave me some really good advice. She was like, write down three things that are priorities to you when you look for a church and then leave everything else because you're never going to find a perfect church but there will be things that you find are more important to you so we did that and found that in our in our home church um and then we kind of learned to take it a bit further where if there's something where okay this doesn't align with the priority it's not a it's not a deal breaker it's just not ideal Am I willing to serve into that to make it better? So for me, it was the media team. I remember getting there and being like, this is really bad. And <laughs> I got <a> chance <laughs> to be like, okay, if you want to improve it, then feel free. And as a, as a student and a recent grad as well, I think that's a really good attitude to have. Of look after your priorities and your deal break as well, and then serve in the things that don't fulfill that. So. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And what about you, Amy? Have you been searching around lots of different churches or have you nailed down one that you are now settled at? Yeah, I just want to put it as really quickly. This is something else that happens at uni. That makes us wander in. I just wandered in and I was like, eh, go. Sorry about that, <laughs> Susanna, that was doing your thing. Um, <laughs> no, no, he's, um, yeah, no, I think I was really fortunate in that I found actually found my church was the second one I visited. Um, right. Basically, I kind of had had, Exeter is so full of amazing student churches it's insane there's like mm -hmm. at least 12 or 13 that I've heard about that people are going to from the CU that they love um so I think that's a plus shameless plug for Exeter now but they've got amazing churches um but I think for me I the CU sent out a video um 
just like a couple of weeks before I moved and it kind of was like a little 30 second clip of some of the student leaders from each church is talking and I kind of through the student link up app actually as well found sort of five or six that I really wanted to try out but the one I'm actually ended up going to wasn't on that list and but through the CU video I kind of saw that I thought that sounds absolutely amazing they had loads of freshest events running so I kind of went and thought I'll try that one out um, and yeah, it was just absolutely amazing. And I, I feel so blessed because I think for me, God knew I needed that. I needed to find my church community quickly. Um, I had a few problems with my home church this year and I think I was just feeling very discouraged about mm. not church. My faith was really, really strong, the strongest I've ever been, but just kind of church as a community, I really needed to find church community and people my age, students, as well as a really sort of strong leadership team. And I think God gave me that and gave me that without me having to try, which was just such a blessing. So yeah, the first one I went to, te- well, so I went to one that morning and then I went to my church in the evening. And so I kind of stuck with the one, that one. I think it, what Susanna said is really important in that, you know, you can't judge off one service. Um, so I think you do have to kind of stick to it and think this feels good, this feels kind of right. And I'm gonna carry on with it and see. I think also just being aware that everybody's different and everybody looks for something different in churches. Um, yeah. For me, the worship's always been really important. I was part of the worship band at my old church and um, I the sort of worship for me is always sort of the way I like to connect with God most. I find it easiest. And so for me, the worship was important. And I went to my church and they played one of my favourite worship songs and it was just insane. And I was like, this is the right one. So I think you kind of just have to follow your instincts and go with it. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I know I have friends who like hopped around to churches, if you want to put it in that way, I guess. Um and they did find their church, but after five or six weeks, and that was okay because that's the way it worked out for them. I think it's different for everyone. But um, yeah, I feel really blessed. I found my church community quickly and sort of threw myself in. And yeah, so that's, that's really good. But yeah, uh, Nice. And, and I mean, what, what has church looked like then? Has it been online stuff or in person? Um, so, so the way my church, Exeter Network Church is where I'm going, if anyone, <laughs> if anyone knows that, um, ENC. And so the way they, they have their sort of student evening on Thursday, they have a student service. Um, and then they have a Sunday evening service as well. So um, it's I've been really fortunate in that until we've obviously gone into lockdown. And um, aside from the time, the week I was at, reading week I was at home and the week before that. Anyway, um, I have been able to go in person. You have to book on. So it's, it's a bit of an odd thing to book to go in church to buy a ticket to church. Um, very, very weird. But so you kind of have to book a ticket, but you get in there, you have to sort of socially distance, obviously. And um, you have to kind of usually have to sit on your own unless you're coming with a member of your household, which is fortunate for me because the girl who lives two doors down from me, as it were, is Christian. So we go to church together, which is lovely. Um, so we can sit together, but they do kind of make you sit separately, which is a bit of a shame. And obviously you have to wear a mask. But with all of that said, um, I have been able to go in person four or five times to the Sunday service, which has been amazing. Um, it was a really emotional experience the first time I went to a church service in person again. I got a bit teary, which I don't tend to do. Um, but I think it was because it'd been so long since I'd been in that environment and to just be so overwhelmed with it all. I think that was really special. So I definitely encourage, if at all possible, go to church in person. Um, it's also good on Zoom. Like, it's okay on Zoom. It's okay online. You still, yeah. The service is still amazing. It's still the same, but it's obviously not quite the same vibe as when you're there. Mm. I feel really blessed, and hopefully it's the same for Susanna, that... Um, in the first few weeks, we have been able to go in person. When we were finding churches, we did have the option to go to the churches' services in person and be there in the building rather than sort of having to find a church online. I think that would have been a lot harder. Um, but, yeah, it, it you know, it's been odd. It's been weird. I feel like I have kind of got used to it now. It feels normal to wear a mask in church now, and it feels normal to put hand sanitizer on as you walk through the door and that kind of thing. But, yeah, no, it's been really good and... Yeah, again, I think everyone's just kind of making the most out of the situation. So, mm. yeah, yeah. And have you been the same, Susanna? You've been in person. Yeah, yeah. So, um, my church has a studio where they kind of broadcast live, but then different um, little pop ups around the city where you can like go and watch the service, um, which I think has been really good because those places are really um, you can really fellowship, I think, and just have that community um in in that safe way but also I think um we kind of just have been having like spontaneous just like worship evenings I think we just did one on Tuesday night before lockdown and I think just doing stuff like that just really makes you feel part of something and I think church community and we have hubs as well which is basically small groups and I really think having that opportunity just to to do life with people and 
obviously um, church services, just being fed, but also having those groups where we can share and yeah, just do community, I think has been so important. And yeah, so yeah, church has been amazing. I think I've really hit hit the jackpot with mine, definitely. Brilliant. And what's, what's the, this could be for either of you jump in, um, what's been the vibe of those services? Because I can speak from my experience where we've been uh, running services for students and welcoming them in, and it's been very reflective. Um, they've been short services. There's been a, a chance for them to respond to a message that's been given and to go away thinking about how God wants to work in their lives. That because that's something that sounds familiar or has it been different? Um, I think from my sort of experience so far, um, I think the vibe has always been very much that like, so actually the sermon series has been about um, the church in lockdown. And there's been so, there's so much in the Bible that talks about embracing the situation we're in, sort of, you know, acknowledging if we focus our eyes on Jesus, then every sort of earthly situation will fall away. And I think that's been sort of the thing that I've really taken away is that I find it quite easy to complain about things that aren't going my way. I think everybody does, but I sort of have yeah. a, one of my, bad, one of my worst sort of habits is to just kind of like, if something isn't sort of going how I'd want it to go just to feel really sorry for myself but I think I've really kind of learned that God doesn't want that for us God is above and beyond COVID in every sort of way shape and form so the service has been very much giving off that vibe of like this is not how any of us want it to be but we have to make the most out of it I think for me the thing I found hardest and the thing that's sort of the vibe that's been slightly um I mean we haven't had any communion which is obviously a really sort of special part of being um, yeah. a Christian and following God so that's been a bit of a shame and also the worship we haven't really been we haven't been able to sing along um but I think the vibe's always been very much like we're all we're a community we're doing this together um and we kind of and there's always been a very much a positive vibe we're, we're being sent out we have listened to the spirit um one of the leaders of my church is I think has got a special gift for hearing things from God he's always got a word from God after our sort of prayer time and he always gets up the front and actually one week it was for me and that was an incredible um experience and I think I've always walked away from church feeling encouraged um even if that encouragement sort of the minute I get back to my flat something there's, a, there's another piece of news and there's another sort of difficulty I think it's you know the, the vibe from church has always been something that's carried me I think um, yeah. yeah I think it's it's kind of been similar for me in the sense of um just part of the community that understands the situation and recognizes the suffering but also believes that Jesus is greater um I think my church is kind of um our kind of tagline is we're a church you can bring a friend to and so it's a church that's very kind of outreach very a church for people that don't see themselves in church and so I think um I felt very much part of the team um, and it was crazy, like they just, I ended up singing on a Tuesday night and just um, on one of the student services. And I think just things like that make me feel like actually it's not us and them. It's not, we're there the leaders and actually we're all one big worship team and everyone needs to worship and everyone needs to get involved. And I think that really has encouraged me that, um, like we were saying before, that I can contribute um, and that my church is a place where it's not about who sees this, but at the same time, everyone's just going for the same thing together and I really just felt a unity that I, at the end of the week I can go to church and everyone's going after the same thing we all want revival we all want a new thing we all want healing we all want miracles and I think especially when you're feeling discouraged to go to church and someone being like let's believe God for greater let's push for more I think it really has stirred me up and encouraged me that way I think just to add to that as well actually I think no one's pretending that this situation is good or ideal or enjoyable or no one's pretending this isn't really tricky and really difficult and I think as a student going to uni this year it's been so much harder for our year as well I, I, I think we really yeah. do deserve sort of to sort of put that message out that that has been really really hard I don't like I think it's almost silly to pretend that it hasn't been because everyone in the world is this is like the most unique situation and that everyone in the world is going through the same thing pretty much in, in sort of not specifically but in general we're all fighting COVID um as so I think I love I sort of love how church hasn't kind of tried to mask that it hasn't sort of avoided it or skirted past it you know we've acknowledged that this isn't something that, that's come from God this is one of the devil's kind of tools that he's using in the world right now but actually it's about acknowledging that it's hard but working together to sort of focus on Jesus and 
rely on him and trust in him to be bigger and better than that. And I think that's been, because I, I just, yeah, I think that's what helped me handle the whole situation was being able to sort of be in an environment where it was okay to say, yeah, this is hard, but that doesn't mean that I don't trust that God can defeat it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Nice. Um, one final question for you guys, because we've been recording for a, about half an hour now, but there's one more thing that I want to ask you. So a lot of student workers, a lot of people on student teams listen to this podcast. Um, and even right now, this includes myself and Vicky as student workers. Um, what I want to ask both of you is how can we, um, as student workers in the church or just the church generally, how can we be serving you right now? So it's in, your, in the middle of your first term, um, we've just gone into a month long lockdown. So we've recorded this um, on the 5th of November. Uh, so the first day of the November lockdown. How can we be serving you who are in halls, who are in the middle of that, that first taste of university? How can we support you right now? Yeah, I think um, love us and pray for us is really what comes to my mind. Um, I think one thing that I have just valued so much is when student leaders just say, I've been praying for you and this is what I want to encourage you with, or I've been praying for you and I just felt this verse was for you, or I just felt this song was for you and I feel God saying this. And it's not about coming up with some crazy, accurate, profound, prophetic word, but it's just about, hey, I've been praying for you and this is something that I want to encourage you with. I think prayer has been something that I've, I've felt, I've felt the prayers of my student leaders over me and I felt them being answered. Um, and so to not underestimate the power of prayer, if you invest in anything over your students to do that, but also um, just reaching out. And I think, um, I guess, coming down to our level in a way and just being like, where are you at um, and what what can I do for you and, and what's on your heart? I think especially our generation, there's so many things that we care about. And we're very engaged in the world and we have a lot of passions and desires. And I think for a student worker to say, hey, I want to know what you're passionate about and how can we journey through that together um, is really humbling to hear. Yeah. I think as well. Um, the other day, my two student leaders came around to my halls and delivered me some chocolate and a card. And we just chatted for about half oh. an hour. But it's such nice chocolate as well. I've nearly what finished the whole bar. What, what are we talking, Amy? Here we go. The Divine Fair Trade. Ooh, lovely. She it's wasn't lying. Orange, which is like orange chocolate, I mean, which is my favourite as well. Um, so that was amazing. But actually, I think it's kind of it's along the lines of what Susanna said, but it's about making us, I don't know, just kind of, yeah, like sort of carving out time to get to know us. I think that's the thing that's been really hard this year is getting to properly know people. Yeah. Um, I think even within church, I mean, I'm really fortunate that I go to a really sort of vibrant student group. There's loads of us, but that kind of means that also within COVID times, it's really hard to get to know people individually on a level and the youth leaders as well, the student leaders. So I think that's something that, yeah, just to really carve out time to properly get to know the freshers. It doesn't, it can be, I mean, if they would rather do it in a group, then obviously in a group when it's allowed to, when you're able to, I mean, but um, yeah, just really sort of getting to know us and what our passion, yeah, passions and desires are. So you can pray for us, but also just so I feel like, you know, we feel on a more sort of personal level with you because I think they are so, I mean, mine are so lovely and encouraging us to be open and to talk to them about any thing that we're struggling with. And I think it's hard to do that when you don't feel like you know somebody, but the minute you have mm. one, you know, we had this one 20 minute sort of 20, 30 minute conversation. I thought, I thought, you know, I felt like I knew them 10 times better than I did before. And I just think it's about carving out. And if you can in person, like, Boris is still allowing us to meet one other person outside you can go for a walk you can go just uh, sort of connect with people get to know people um and I think one other thing I think has been helpful for me at least is um some of the sort of my student leader one of my student leaders sort of linked me up with a couple of other people that she's kind of thought that I'd get on with and actually they've ended up being my two closest friends in church and we're planning to live together next year so that has all come just from her being like do you know what I've got to know these people they seem like they get to get on why don't we put them together and so I'd say yeah get to know the students as best as you can in the situation oh. and then work on those relationships and there you go that's prayer. the Obviously prayer above anything, that is it can I jump in on what you just said? Real encouragement. I um, When I went to uni, I was really not keen on going out. It was just not not my vibe. And when you're a fresher, there's, there's loads of stuff going on that mean you don't have to go out, but it's really hard to know what those things are if you don't know the city. Yeah. 
And um, my student worker noticed that two other girls had said the same thing. So she linked us up and we went to this coffee shop that was open till midnight. So we, we had like a night out, but we just ate cake. And it was <laughs> the best. It was the best Amazing. thing. And <laughs> six and a half years later, they're still my best friends. We've done road trips around America together, led small groups together. So like student workers listening, you just don't know those friendships that you have made and actually two of them were just made of honor at my wedding so it was yeah those friendships that you are feels a little bit like you're piecing people together you are in some ways but it's that strategy combined with prayer creates those really good friendships that last years so it's really cool too amazing that's that's the impact of church isn't it that um and thinking about how different your experience would be um you know, if you hadn't been going to church in your first few weeks, so, you know, Imi, you wouldn't have had that house, Susanna, you wouldn't have had um, the opportunity to get up and think about worship in that way and, and mm-hmm. help to lead the body um, in, in the worship without the, the, the singing and the raising of voices, which I think we're all finding hard. And, and hearing you guys describe that impact of church is absolutely fantastic. Um, bless you both. Thank you for coming on and sharing something of your experience, taking time out of um, your week. Imi, two assessments this week. Um, are we nervous? Uh, a bit. They're both, well, they're both formative, which means they don't actually count towards anything in the end. So it's not too bad. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, hopefully they'll go. Okay. We'll okay see. Susanna is probably grateful for this podcast because it means that she could take her face out of a law book um, yeah. for an hour. Um, um, we want to finish um, by kind of praying over you um, and all the other first years who will listen to this podcast Um, Vicky do you want to do that I would love to yeah Jesus I thank you for Susanna and for Immy and for every student who's listening to this God I thank you that um, you've still called this generation of students with a purpose and I pray that in the times where that purpose doesn't seem clear and it's confusing that you just bring clarity to that Um, and I pray for hope and for joy for all students um, whether it's their first year or their fifth year Um, I pray that this year would be a year defined by joy which is so crazy when you look at the world around us but that is the kingdom of God. So I pray God that um, if students don't know joy and they don't know hope, um, that they would find home in a local church in their city. Um, and I pray, um, yes, for every student that just needs to know your peace at this time. And also I just pray for creativity as we're heading into another lockdown um, for every student worker or church leader or student who's just pioneering new ways of doing things um, I pray God that you would give us just like divine creativity um, and new ways of thinking about things and new ways of doing things and that that would feel really fun and life-giving and not um, challenging so yeah I got a breath play that you pray that you bless these two and every single person listening in Jesus name amen amen Defined by joy. I like that, Vicky. Um, carry that with you guys. I, I have every confidence that you will. Um, so it's by from me and from Vicky and from Susanna and Immy as well. Um, this is the end of season one of the Fusion podcast. So uh, keep your eyes trained to our channels, our social channels, and season two uh, will be up before you know it. So it's by from all of us. Bye.